Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am back with a slimline winter Christmas themed card using some adorable products by Hello Bluebird. I am going to showcase this snow day stamp set and the tall tree scene die. So first of all starting with my image. So as you saw in the beginning I am only going to use one image for this card which is something that I really like doing from time to time when I am creating a slimline card in the vertical way uh, and then sort of try to also impress with the ink blending or the way my background is looking. Um, so that's what I'm doing today. The coloring of these images I'm doing onto Translotype Perfect Coloring Paper because I'm going to try to put some more um, thought into the shadows and I will need to add a lot of layers to get the shadows where I want them to be. And I stamped out these images using Gina K Design Amalgam Ink, which is the ink that I'm using all the time. It's an ink that is good for Copic markers, for alcohol markers in general, but also if you want to watercolor. So um, this way I avoid using the wrong ink, which I did when I started this hobby. Um, so avoiding that. Um, I am laying down my colors from darkest to lightest uh, and I just keep going back and forth until I'm happy with the blend. Uh, I must admit my two favorite dark brown markers being the E47 and E57 are struggling from time to time. Um, something that I realized thanks to the help of the owners from Card Niveau who I messaged about it um, was that if I have some sort of a syrupy uh, feel onto my markers which I sometimes have um, I don't know why the caps are on there correctly um, I have refills from those so it's not that they can dry out um, or anything like that as well uh, so it's a mystery and I don't like it and I was going to buy new ones um, but I texted Carnival first and then they suggested several things for me to do, some that um, weren't going to work for my issue because I already tried it. Uh, but then another one was that maybe um, all the alcohol was evaporated and that's maybe the reason why it's sort of syrupy. Uh, now the cap is on there, so I don't know how it could evaporate, um, but it did. Um, I'm just going to keep it on, on that idea that they gave me. Um, and as final resort, I try to actually use the refill of my colorless blender. And I uh, poured it onto the tip of my marker. Because the tip isn't ruined, it's just syrupy. Um, so I put it on there and then I rubbed it in with my fingers and then I did it a second time and I had the idea that the syrupy feel just went away. So I did that on the second marker as well and then I just added <laughs> some uh, refill again. It's not that the point was cleared, uh, <laughs> like the color wasn't there anymore, that was not the case at all, but just to be sure I refilled the marker as well at that certain point. That's something that truly helped me. Um, now I am doing the voiceover of this video quite a bit later than when I <laughs> created this card. Um, the syrupy feel returned. Not immediately, um, I think a week, two weeks after. Um, and that's a bit of a shame. Uh, but currently this is my solution because sometimes markers are sold out in the stores um, and if you are on that point of buying a new one of a color that you already own uh, maybe just try doing something like this um, and maybe it already helps you out because um, I was already thinking about other browns that I could start using but I just I love this combination. It's E47, E57, E33, E53 if you want even lighter colors then I add E51, E50 and that's just how I like to <laughs> 
create my brown color with Copic markers. So I am glad that I found this solution just to help me out. There will be a certain point where I will buy a new marker because I cannot do this all the time or every two weeks or three weeks. Um, so the big issue that is causing my marker to get syrupy isn't solved, uh, but I can color with it if I need to. So. And that's maybe handy for you as well. So that's why I'm just saying this. Uh, maybe it helps. So I'm already almost finished with my colors. Uh, so here I did some accessories in purple. And then I will also use a muted lovely blue for the scarves. Um, and these images of course are matching. I don't know if you saw it. But actually I used exactly the same browns for both images. Uh, but I try to keep um, the dark brown of the hedgehog a bit lighter than the dark brown of the squirrel. And then the belly of the squirrel and face is a bit lighter uh, than the one of the hedgehog. But th those are details. Um, so that's what I try doing. Uh, I will also be Copic coloring my trees. Um, so it took me quite a while to color everything for this card. And, um, well, I am not going to show you the complete coloring of the trees. I will just show you one tree, how I did it, and then I just copied the same method for the rest of the trees. So, and then with these accessories, I always try to... I don't know why, you can go really colorful with, with markers, with your background, combining the two. Um, for not a specific reason I sort of often use the color of one of the accessories in my background so that's also why I decided in the end to go for a purple sky because uh, it could just match with the purple in the accessories of these two critters and I just loved it so having all the coloring finished for these I am going to cut it out using the matching dies and then it's time to do the trees. So for the trees actually um, I just tried something out. Um, I once did a uh, watercolored tree background in slimline card um, and I liked it. <laughs> and I just started with a few vertical stripes and then I just went horizontal randomly. Um, and then I blended it out a bit and with that idea in mind I also started on these trees uh, so now I don't need the vertical lines because there is a die cut piece for um, and then I just added the E33 I am blending it out with E53 <laughs> and then um, I decided that it was just a bit too harsh on the white trees so I just um, colored the whole tree in using E50 I think and um, well then I went back and forth because of course you can sometimes push away the marker color when you add another one um, so that's why I went over everything once more and that's actually how I created these trees you just see me doing the tracing of the lines uh, to have it a bit darker and I'm really sorry my hair will be in the way quite often. Uh, you know those baby hairs on the front of your head <laughs> that aren't... Yeah, you cannot tame them. They are just there and they will be there every time again and again. Um, so here I'm just filling up that tree and then I can darken the colors a bit more. So I'm just going over those stripes again. Also, the stripes aren't um, always similar. Some are shorter, some are longer. Sometimes there are two stripes on the same side. Sometimes it's just left, right, left, right. Um, just trying to be a bit random. But you know, trying to be random is one of the hardest things um, when you're making a card because you want it to look effortless, but we all know how much time is going into creating a card, placing those sequins and the embellishments and you no. Know. Um, so I'm trying to create a natural tree. 
So I just went over those stripes again and now I'm darkening the edge once more. And then I just still found that there was a huge, um, well, there was a lot of contrast. So I just started flicking with my sort of mid-tone um, onto the tree. Uh, some bigger areas, then nothing, uh, then again some bigger areas. And that's just what I did. <laughs> just trying to get it right. And actually I was quite happy with it. So I just did it for those other trees as well. Now I'm going to start on assembling all the elements that I need for the background. I've die cut the tall tree scene die once more to have two frames and I just added them on top of each other. This will give me a little bit of dimension, not a lot. And then I trimmed out a panel slightly smaller than the frame and I am going to create a purple sky. So I have a really dark purple and then a mid-tone and then a really light one. So I'm going from Dusty Concord to Seedless Preserves and then I will end up with Victorian Velvet. That is sort of the idea. And um, while I am blending I always am quite cautious about not going too low with my darkest color. And then once I have a complete vision of how the blending is going, I tend to go way lower with the darkest color because I know I can. Uh, but in the beginning when you don't have everything blended and you don't have a complete vision of what the colors can do, I just try to be careful. And now you will see I'm going way lower. <laughs> like I'm doubling the amount of this dark purple and then there will be a transition piece then just the seedless preserves, then again transition, and then Victorian Velvet. And I think that these colors are just so powerful all together. I'm going to do a lot of splattering later on with some white gouache. But I truly ha had to get this background sort of perfect. But then again, if you add a lot of splatters, some mistakes, uh, parts that aren't blended as well, can be covered and of course I have all these trees uh, they take a lot of space also so if it wasn't perfectly blended then I will cover it up <laughs> no issues so I'm just adding these trees first um, I don't want my frame to be splattered on so I'm going to try to get everything onto this panel that I blended um, all the elements for the background and then I will splatter it and then I will add the frame. So I temporarily adhere the frame to get everything in place, uh, make it a bit easier for myself. Um, and now before I'm adding all the hills, these are snowy hills in my opinion, um, I'm just going to slightly ink blend a little bit of tumble glass on the edges. Just to give it a bit of shadow, there are different layers so shadow is in order. Of course you don't need to do that, um, if you see the snow it can be white completely as well. And these tiny pieces are from in between the trees, if you don't want to add them you don't need to, but I just thought that <laughs> I would keep it as complete as possible. And now I'm also going to add those. Just inlaying it using the frame again. And I just love it when I do the voiceovers and I can see how the card is coming together. Because as you know me, I'm not planning anything. so But you never know how it's going to turn out. Um, and I just, I, I love watching the edited video. So I'm using my Winsor & Newton Designer Gouache Permanent White and I'm going to splatter it all over this panel but I first will need to add the image because I also want to have some snowy splatters on top of them of course. Uh, then they are like more a part of the scene in my opinion. So lately I just splatter everything. 
I'm adding them using a few thin foam squares. Well, a few. I'm covering them completely with thin foam squares. I just prefer doing this because, um, well, I don't want mailing to ruin anything. And then I'm going to place them on the bottom half of my slimline panel. And then it's time to splatter. Now for the splattering, it's a question that I get often, so I prefer repeating it for you uh, than um, not having said it. But if you want to have that really opaque white splatters onto your panel, then just make sure that you aren't adding too much water. If you add too much water, then um, your gouache or your white paint will tend to grab on the color of what is underneath it and then you will just have a faded purple snowflake which is not the idea. Um, so just start with one drop of water, mix it all, uh, try to splatter it. If it's not working then add one extra drop but don't add too much because as soon as you add it too much water then you will have to use more gouache or more more paint to get the consistency that you need uh, so just try to avoid that and start with small amounts of water and then it will normally work out i don't think you need necessarily this paint that i'm using uh, maybe you have a perfect one at home um, but you just added maybe a bit too much water so I'm adding this panel onto a slimline car base and then I still need to add some finishes and a sentiment. For the sentiment I'm just going to white heat emboss um, this sentiment from the stamp set itself, let it snow and then I will use my Ranger embossing powder white super fine detail. The script of Hello Bluebird is really delicate. I'm always using my super fine detail then by Ranger and once it is heat set I can buff off the excess of the anti-static powder tool that I just used and then I can use a sentiment strip. This time I'm using the Sweet Feline by Mama Elephant. This strip is just perfect for those thin sentiments and then I'm going to add it onto this panel Therefore, I'm using some thin foam squares from Scrapbook Adhesives again, but this time the black ones because I have black cardstock and I don't know why I have black ones, so why wouldn't I use black uh, thin foam squares? I'm covering it completely and then I will use my T square ruler to get it aligned straight. I first added it a bit too low, in my opinion, so I just took it off again and placed it a bit higher. And then it's time to decorate. For the decorations today I am using the Studio Kacha Iridescent Stars and I truly adore the iridescent sequins that I have by Studio Kacha. I don't have a lot of Studio Kacha. So far I don't know where I can get Studio Kacha in Europe. And then unfortunately I'm not talking about the UK and stuff because of the Brexit. Um, but that aside, um, if you know perhaps a shop that is selling it in Europe, then let me know in the comments because I truly, truly adore this brand and the sequence of it. So I would love to know where I can get it in Europe. So I'm just adding these using some liquid glue and then I am going to finish off my critters using some Stardust stickles. One of my favorite stickles. Uh, I only have three sorts of stickles, all sort of iridescent uh, or shiny just without any specific color um, but truly these stardust stickles are just gorgeous and once they are added I call this card finished so I truly hope that you enjoyed the making of this card and of course the video the end result and stuff if you have any questions, you know where to find me, just leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I really want to thank you all for watching this video and sticking around. Uh, I hope that you have a wonderful day left and I will be back soon with some new crafty inspiration. Bye! <music>